Hi, welcome to another video of Yocto tutorial series. This video is the continuation of the last video. In the last video, we learned about how to configure the kernel using menu config, but we didn't learn how to save that config permanently. In this video, we are going to learn how to configure the kernel and how to save that configuration permanently and how to implement that configuration so that we do not need to configure it again and again using menu config. So let us begin. So here is the flow that I have. So first of all what we need to do is we need to create a kernel bb append file. So if you don't know what is bb append file and how it works please refer to my video on bp append file. Then we have to configure the kernel using menu config then we will save the kernel using menu config and after that we will copy the kernel to the recipe the config file to the recipe folder and then we will build the image with that config so let us begin so first of all we need to create the kernel pb append file so to do that i have my own layer meta my layers and here previously i have this recipe examples that i used for the previous tutorials so for kernel we need to, need to create a new folder called recipes minus kernel this is the convention that goes for the kernel so let us check what is inside this recipe kernel i will show you a tree so the tree is in recipe kernel folder we have another folder called linux and then here we have the bp append file so our kernel name is linux minus yocto and the version is 5.15 if you don't know how this version works this package version works please watch my video on basic yocto variables or basic variables on yocto and then bb append so the same name we will use for the folder in which the sources will be present for example our configuration file so in the linux in the recipe kernel we have a linux folder in the linux folder we have the bb append file with this name if you have some older or some newer version you can check the linux version uh, that uh, the linux that the yocto build is using and then here the yocto linux yocto okay so if we see our bb append file first of all here i have added simple file extra paths prepend and this directory and the pn if you don't know why do we do this so i have an extra video for this i have already created please watch that video before you go further so but simply this uh, line adds this folder the linux yocto folder in the search path but for detail please watch that video okay so right now we only have this in bb event file let me show you the structure how it looks here so here i have my meta layer inside pokey and then here i have recipe kernel inside recipe kernel i have here baby append file and this linux folder now the second step is to configure the kernel by menu config so last time we did the configuration for gpio sysfs this time we will also do that so let me run this bit pick the command is bit pick minus c menu config and virtual kernel virtual forward slash kernel so here our menu config so we will wait and starting and so on so here we have our menu config so if you don't know how menu config works please watch my previous video so the configuration that you want to set is first of all we have to enable Yeah, we have to enable this expert user mode. So for doing that, I have pressed Y. Then I have navigated using left arrow. Oh, sorry, right arrow. Then OK, save exit. Then I will go exit, and then I will go to. Then I will go to. Device driver. In device driver, we'll go to GPIO. GPIO support, and here we have this sysfs interface 
so I'll put Y here as well then I will save it ok exit and then I will exit from and then I will exit from the mini config so in this way we have configured the kernel for sysfs gpio but this configuration is temporary it means that if you do a state cache if you remove it a clean state cache so this configuration will be deleted or removed so we have to save it so to save it the command is similar to the previous one bit bake minus c this time save def config and virtual kernel so this this command will save our configuration to the working directory of Linux so so where it is so we'll go to the other folder so here we have our sources in sources we have three folders download as state cache and temp we'll go in temp and in work temp work inside temp work we'll go to beagle bone yocto poke linux and then here we'll go to linux yocto here we have and then here here over this folder beagle bone black yocto standard builds so inside here you can see that we have a dev config file now so what we'll do now is we will just first see the path and we'll copy this dev config file to our recipe folder that I have shown earlier. So we'll go to recipe kernel Linux and Linux Yocto. So here we will copy. So here's the path. So we want to copy dev config. Uh, wait. Oh, sorry. I first of all I have to put the CP. I forgot. Position one CP and def config and here. So as you can see that now def config is here inside our folder. Now the third is we have copied and we need to build. But before building, we need to do some changes to this Yocto BB append file. So we'll go to Yocto BB append file. Here I have already these two configurations first of all we need to add we need to add this configuration def config file this def config is the standard name and uh, the kernel will or the bit -bit system will look for it for the kernel configuration so this is the standard name please do not change it so here what do we have here so first of all we'll tell the recipe or the bit -bit system that we will we are using this def config file for the kernel configuration furthermore there is a config mode and we have written here all def config so what does it mean right now we are using the standard linux kernel from yocto and uh, if there is a third party who have created their own uh, linux uh, system or own configuration so there are some default configuration from the yocto poke or pokey we would say so what we will say that we will keep that all default configuration and on that default configuration we will add our custom default configure our custom configuration that we did so let us also see the dev config file that we have configured what we have configured is if we see here sysfs sysfs yeah if you see here gpio sysfs that we have enabled so this has been done and we have to we, we just need to add these two files to add the our own configuration now what we'll do is we'll save it and we will do clean estate for Linux kernel so let us do here clean estate so we have a fresh image clean estate so it means that everything will be removed and no configuration is now in our this is source work directory so 
now it is all clean it means that there is nothing remaining in this folder if you see the this folder even doesn't exist now so we have only this folder and it is right now empty so now what we'll do is we'll check our menu config once more and these sysfs configuration should be there so what we'll do is menu config and execute and this sysfs for gpio should be there by default we do not need to activate it now as you can see that we are inside the menu config and now if we check those two settings that was first of all in journal uh, setup so if we check that expert mode it should be activated or enabled so yes you see that it is now enabled and let us check the device drivers and GPIO support so you can see that this sysfs interface is also activated so this is how we write the and save the configuration and we can reuse it so I hope you like the video in the next video we are going to learn about the fragments or kernel configuration fragments so it makes the configuration more modular and it is easy to activate and deactivate some part of the kernel or some device drivers easily without uh, changing whole whole uh, def config or without uh, going to menu config again and again so i hope you like the video please like and subscribe my channel and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching